Hey guys, I got Tracy Hubar on right now with us, and she is coming all the way from Colorado. How you doing, Tracy? I am good. I'm coming from Reno, though. Are you in Reno now? I'm in Reno. You're traveling on me. Yeah. No, I'm in Reno. I thought you were always, no, you were in Colorado? Nope. NLP I... Comprehensive is in Colorado. I'm in Reno. Oh, gosh. You said the word, NLP Comprehensive. That's the <laughs> book, guys, right? So Ch Tracy actually wrote the forward for this book uh, for her dad. And she's been involved in marketing sales for over 20 years. She's a transformational expert uh, with helping people. And uh, Teresa, I just want to thank you for taking the time out to talk to me today and sharing some of the gold nuggets you got about what is NLP in your, you know, in your humble opinion when it comes down to it. Like a lot, a lot of times people hear that. They don't know what it means. Um, right. They get smoke and mirrors. You know, they're not really sure. Like what, how would you explain to somebody to, to allow them to understand a glimpse of what it is that you're able to help somebody do? So first, thank you for having me on here. This is super cool. I am so glad that we connected. And um, actually, that's one of the zillion reasons I absolutely love Facebook. So I just have to throw that out there. I hear a lot of people complaining about Facebook, and it's just such a great place to make connections with people that we wouldn't normally meet, right? And NLP is actually, it stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. It was developed in the 70s, but what it really is, other than not the most lovely name, what it really is, is a great way for people to learn how their own mind works, right? We all talk to ourselves in our head and to, to learn how our mind works and make it better, right? So it's a study of excellence. It's about performance. It's about living sane and enjoying life without all that junk going on in our heads mm -hmm. and, and helps us get out of our own way. So when, um, when you're saying all the junk going on in our heads, could uh -huh. you be a little more specific with how you've helped people remove some of the junk? Yeah, well, actually, I'll give you an example of my own that came up a couple months ago that um, people remove some of the junk. Mm -hmm. I like to use because, you know, I like to use this example because it's easy for people in the coaching space or the self help space or the personal development space to either feel like they need to present themselves as being perfect or actually feel like they are. And this is something funny that came up for me two or three months ago, maybe. I was just having a conversation with my daughter. She's 26. She works. She's, you know, doing well. And we were, I think we might have been going shopping for the holidays or something. And anyway, I was just chatting about this conversation I had had with someone when I was younger. And, you know, silly thing, what do you want to be when you grew up? And I was telling my daughter that back then I had told this person I wanted to be either a teacher or a lawyer. And this person very lovingly said, oh, honey, be a lawyer. You'll make a lot more money. And it's so funny because it took until I was a grown adult with grown kids of my own to realize that simple piece, that little, little comment had gone in. And I had taken that at my age of 11 to mean I couldn't do something I loved and make money. That those two were mutually exclusive. And it was, I remember like it was yesterday, it was the most bizarre revelation to realize that something that happened when I was 11 years old that was completely innocuous at the time, you know, family friend was just kind of talking and being cute, thought they were being funny, had gone in. And I had actually carried that through to my adult space, believing I could not find a way to combine doing good and making money. And um, so that's the kind of junk I mean, you know, we have these different perceptions in our mind of things that are possible or not possible. And really all that those are, are perceptions. You know, but they guide us. And oftentimes we don't even know on a conscious level what it is that's stopping us from, from moving forward, from reaching our goals, from being happy, from enjoying our day. So, you know, you're sharing that if you were going to talk to me, let's say, you know, I had a mental block around, let's say money, for example, you know, mm -hmm. how would, how would somebody even know they had a, a block around that? You know, and that's a fascinating thing. I don't think people necessarily always know what their blocks are. Oftentimes we know we're having trouble with something, right? And a lot of people don't use the term block or even think like that. They just know I'm 40 years old. We'll pretend I'm not speaking to you since I mentioned age. <laughs> I'm 40 years old. I'm not making the money I want to make. I'm working my butt off every day, all day. Something isn't right. You know, I'm not going to be able to reach higher where I want to or I'm struggling to put my kids through college. What am I going to do? You know, my kids are going into high school. I've only got four years. 
for people, I find clients when I'm working with them, when, when they realize there's a problem is when they're in that problem, when they're running up against that wall, when it's, you know, become an, enough of an issue that they're saying something isn't right. I need to do something. I need to change something. And that's, and then, you know, once you or somebody else realizes they're hitting that space, then you can have a conversation with them. And oftentimes a conversation, a genuine vulnerable conversation can get to the root of what's been bothering them, you know, and what's holding them back and what's blocking them and what's keeping them from moving forward, getting the junk out of their what are, what are some of the things you've helped people with get the junk out of their head? And, and what's the time frame you did it? Oh, gosh, everything. I mean, I worked with one woman who had a bunch of stuff about her mom mm-hmm. who had made little comments that she didn't really know were as damaging as they were, right? And were keeping being this person from feeling like she was worthy of success. Uh, we worked through that in, it was about two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and how long and had you had that problem? All, I'm sorry. Oh, her entire life. She was 47, 47. And she had been dealing with that her entire life. Um, worked with someone else. When, when you worked with her at the age 46, 47, She had been carrying around these beliefs that she had ever since she was a child, basically is what you're sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Her mom would make little comments to her, nothing, you know, not horrifically abusive on the outside. So she didn't, she hadn't made the connection that those little comments were what were holding her back because she didn't have an abusive childhood. She loved her mom very much, but her mom would still just make comments, silly comments, you know, how could you be so stupid or, Time. And in that day and age seemed silly and weren't, you know, we didn't know back then, right? 40 or 50. Now we're much more aware about it. You know, I'm sure a lot of us have stories about conversations or in today's day and age would just be this huge flag. Right. And she had been carrying that around for, you know, 35, 40 years. And we spent a couple hours together and were able to identify where her challenges were, figure out for her, it was this voice she kept hearing. Every time she started to step outside her comfort zone or make a, make a, you know, any sort of advancement, anything outside the box, she'd hear this voice in the back of her head telling her she couldn't really do that and don't risk it. And so we were able to just play with that a little bit. And yeah, within two hours, she was uh, not hearing that voice anymore. She was bolder. She was taking the steps she needed to take to move forward, to make shifts and change. And she's been, I actually just got an email from her and she's doing fantastic. She's loving life. And the most important thing, which was her goal, was having fun and not being afraid to try things anymore. And what, what's so, happened because she, she did that at this point, she's able to go out and try things and have fun. What are some of the things that she shared with you? Um, um, you know, she's gotten a promotion at work, which is huge. That's something she wouldn't have had the courage to try to get mm-hmm. in the past. She is enjoying her kids more and they're older. They're in, I think they're a sophomore and a senior in high school. So they're older. She's enjoying them more. She's having more fun with them. And her biggest change, her biggest shift that she has shared with me is it feels like a weight's been lifted off her shoulders. She doesn't feel like actually one of the metaphors she used and metaphors are huge is that she felt like there was a rope around her waist, just holding her back. And there was somebody back there every time she tried to take a step forward, somebody was pulling her back and she doesn't feel like that anymore, which, you know, for her, that's been the life changing piece of things. Yeah. I I had a talk with somebody earlier that it was like that anchor around them. The tide was rising and they were stuck in the water and they were about to go under. Yeah. When you you have somebody like that, um, it gives a lot of um, great enjoyment when you're able to help them make that shift. And I I think that's one of the things that you and I both share in common about just genuinely, I want to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, And and the time is true. I mean, I I 100% believe that 
no question that you work with a lady for a few hours and the shifts yeah. that you have been tremendous for it. I know you've done that over and over and over again. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, it's fun when you're able to look at things from a different perspective, from the traditional perspective, we're all taught, which is if we have stuff in our heads, we need to get over it. It's going to take a long time and a lot of money and hours in therapy and it's going to be hard right? Change is hard. How many times have we heard that? Yeah. And once you're able to make that shift and realize it doesn't have to be hard, it can actually be easy. I was doing a training, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And there were 20 people on it, 15, 20 people on the training. So, you know, it wasn't one-on-one -on -one and it was online just like this. Mm -hmm. And through a couple of the, um, processes we were working through, I got an email from the lady, from one of the um, people on the training afterwards saying that just going through this simple thing, the training was an hour. And again, there were 15 to 20 people on it. So it was not one-on-one. -on -one. She was able to break through a mental block she had regarding running her coaching business. Mm -hmm. And um, that was just a couple of weeks ago. So I don't really have results on that yet, but I did get an email from her saying that she was booking up. She had a full calendar for the first time in two and a half years. So it's, it's amazing and such a gift to be able to help people achieve these shifts in such a short time. That's so, you know, counter to what at least a lot of us. Yeah. It's counter, counter to what we've taught, you know, we taught, Hey, you go to therapy for the next 20 years to deal with your trauma that you were either something happened as a child of some sort, mm -hmm. uh, you know, recently I, I worked with a woman who had a, a money buck around uh, getting herself out there. It was because she had some other trauma that was in her past. So it was keeping right. her getting her business online and getting her, her message basically out there. So, you know, when you get that shift and then the person sends you that message of like, hey, here's, you know, their first marketing message they're putting out there. And, you know, they're they're on the way because they've already dealt with the stuff they're doing. Right. That's, that's the biggest thing. So how did, how did you get started as an entrepreneur? Oh, my dad was an entrepreneur. He was a serial entrepreneur. I don't remember what number he ended at, but somewhere around 41, 44 different companies he started in his lifetime. 44 different companies. How, how old did he get? Uh, 70, 71. Wow. 44 yeah. companies. That's, that's impressive. He was a busy guy. <laughs> he was a busy guy. <laughs> He was a busy guy and he started a lot of those, you know, when I was around. So I was around for him going to business meetings and starting. Um, you went to business school before you knew it was business school. Yes, actually. I remember being young and we were designing uh, locker organizers that I wanted to make to put inside lockers in school. And yeah, I, that was just always kind of my, that was always my groove. That's where I knew I was going to be, was working for myself. When, when did you start as an entrepreneur when there was a first project you remember as a child that you worked on, where it was like you were starting your own business or you had a, had a drive to achieve? Was it that Barbie doll you wanted to buy or the bicycle or we all have got something. I had, a, I had a toy myself. Yeah. You know, it was, gosh, it was, I mean, my first job was as a paper you know, paper delivery. That was back when we actually rode bikes and delivered papers. That was back when they read papers. So. Exactly. Exactly. And you went to the door to collect your payment and you'd get your tips. And, you know, my tips were, I mean, that was it for me. That was when I got to go. And once I had my tips, I got to buy the clothes that I wanted to buy and, you know, go to the movies I wanted to go to. And I must've been 12, I think right around there, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've just always had it in me. I think some of it's genetic too, though. I know my uh, youngest daughter, very entrepreneurial, um, you know, from like the time she was two. Her favorite game to play was Office. She would get <laughs> my books from work and my notebooks and stash them in her desk. And she'd be on her phone having business calls during the day. So I think some of it's just genetic. I, I That's my theory anyway. Probably just imitating you because whether you realize it or not, I mean, like when that child is in the womb, they're listening to you on the phone. They can feel what you're feeling. Right. You're going through this, and you're, you're having sessions with people, right? They got nine months of training in there. You know, <laughs> That's before, true. Before they even came out the door. I mean, this is a lot of information to, to get to soak up, right? It's I a mean, huge amount of huge information. information. Yeah. Yeah. And not to mention, you, you grew up in that with your dad. How, mm -hmm. you know, how, how did your dad stumble upon you know, NLP? You know, I'm not positive what his first introduction to it was. 
to my best knowledge, it was actually through Tony Robbins. Okay. Tony Robbins got his start through NLP and he, you know, one of the um, true gifts for NLP itself was Tony Robbins starting to make it a little bit more popular and getting it out there. Um, when it was started, you know, what, 40 years ago now, it wasn't as mainstream. And so my dad stumbled across Tony Robbins, thought it was cool, learned a bit about NLP. He was always the kind of guy who would research things, right? So wherever, whatever he learned here, he wanted to find out where it came from. And, you know, I'll never forget him telling me about it. No, honey, I learned this great new thing. And my education, my college degree is in psychology. So he would tell me about this stuff and I'd be like, yeah, whatever. That's just psychology, you know, some new knockoff, right? Because I was still I was fresh out of school and I was really just in that space. Um, yeah. You knew it all already. You just went yeah, to exactly. I mean, I to listen to dad. What does dad know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, it was a lot of money and a lot of time to learn it all. Why bother going into this other thing? And my dad was always very passionate about things. So he was very passionate about whatever he was learning. And um, NLP was definitely the one that stuck and the one that was real. But before that, there were a couple other um, avenues he was checking out. So. <laughs> It was, yeah, when I first, you know, heard about NLP, I was like, yeah, dad, whatever, dude, that's fine. And then life happened, right? Then things got real for me. And I went through a space in my life where my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And that was on Thanksgiving Sunday. Um, she was going to go into surgery on Wednesday and given a 5% chance of survival. Wow. His dad was fighting a bone infection from a... Um, shoulder replacement that had gone bad and my daughter was diagnosed with anorexia hospitalized and put on bed rest told she could have a heart attack if she got up to go to the bathroom wow so it was kind of those three things and um using some more colorful language than i'll share here i called my dad and i was like help like whatever it is you have and you know i need help and he and my stepmom were amazing and they lived about five hours away from us dropped everything came up they you know, helped me and my family. They worked with my mom. They talked to her before surgery. They talked to her surgeon before surgery. And my dad talked to the surgeon and said, hey, these things you cannot say in the operating room. I know things are said. I know you guys talk about things. If things go wrong, you just talk about what you need to talk about. Don't say this isn't going to work or she's not going to make it or anything like that because it goes into the subconscious and she'll hear you. Mm -hmm. And that was in November of 2001. My mom was cancer-free until the day that she died in November of 2013. So, wow. you know, she made it 12 years after in large part because of the work that he did with her, with her surgeon um, and with us and being able to deal with her because that's a whole nother level, right? And yeah. same thing with my daughter. She had um, the hospital she was admitted to definitely saved her life physically. I am so grateful to them for that. They absolutely um, made things a bit more challenging internally for her. And ultimately we ended up um, taking her out of the hospital and she had an anxiety disorder that was new, a couple other things she was dealing with. And I kid you not through NLP, she, that was in February of 2002 and she has never been hospitalized again. It took us five months to get her up to her goal weight. She has never fallen below that. And she was at you know, I mean, she was really, her heart had been impacted. She was really in a lot of trouble at that point. And through NLP and some of the different things that we know and some coaching and, and working with her, we were able to, you know, help her get healthy and strong. And I mean, she's rocking it. Wow. So that was kind of my introduction. It was introduction by fire. It's a little bit of introduction by like, that's like by fire. Like, go, 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 go. I mean, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely not the, oh, this looks interesting. Let's go learn about it. It was definitely a much word on the phone. So you, you, you became a believer right. at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, you know, and a believer because I've seen it. Like I've seen the change it makes and I've seen the, um, I've seen the contrast also, you know, so it's not just I've seen it work, but I've seen what happens when, Sometimes, and this isn't always the case, this is not to bash traditional therapy or counseling. It absolutely is the answer for some people, you know, and that's um, important. I want to make sure this isn't taken as, you know, that is bad and this is good. But 
what it has done for me is it's given me a set of tools that I can use working with clients to get them, you know, to make shifts. And even what I find the most fun with NLP is working with people who have blocks or ideas in their mind, right? They're very set on what their idea is, what their concept of what they want to do. And they're not interested in change, but through language and conversation, you can actually help them achieve the change that, that they need to get them the results they want. You know, because most of us, I think, I know when I'm somewhere, I know if I want to be somewhere else, right? I know if I need to change, but I don't necessarily know what that space is in between. You know, I know where I am and I know where I want to be, but I don't always know what change I need to get there. And being able to help someone get from point A to point B is just, it's such a powerful gift. It is. And you know, I mean, you've helped countless people achieve mind-blowing results. Yeah, it's insane. That's, I mean, the funny part is like going back to, you have that thing with your dad and how he sees you in that light. Mm-hmm. You know, and he had 44 different businesses and stuff like that before he did this for the rest of his life. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like I, I had that same thing where I had been doing different businesses or, you know, being a Marine or being a knucklehead from college or fall player mm-hmm. and this big, you know, guy that's doing this stuff. I'm like, wait a minute, you're helping do what? And they, they, just, they just don't comprehend. And it was, it wasn't until about a, a, it was a few weeks ago and there's this guy and he was, big old football player guy. I mean, it's big six, three, big offensive tackle guy. And I could see something was going on. And I was like, you know what? I was like, do you want some help with that? You know? And that's the number one, one of the biggest things you gotta, you know, if somebody wants to help and they, they're truly desired to make a change, it can change can happen in an instant. Yes. You know, it, it's coming to that conclusion that they're ready to release whatever that bad programming is. Yeah. Because there are people who don't realize they're getting a payoff on whatever it is, but they, they realize right. they're not. Right. So in doing that process with him and just, I saw him um, just, I think last week I was working out and he was in the weight room. I went over to him and I could see it from across the room. It changed. You know, I could see his face. Like when I, yeah. when I reached over to shake his hand, he had a big old smile on his face and just his, his mind was just completely different. I could see just by looking at him. So it's, it is powerful. Um, Tracy, I, I appreciate you spending the time getting you know, where, Where's the best way for people to get uh, more in touch with you again, uh, I'll put in a plug for the book right here, guys, the NLP, the essential guide uh, to neuro-linguistic programming from NLP comprehensive. And you wrote the forward for this book for your dad. Um, that thing is like an encyclopedia, by the way. It's very good. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you don't pick it up and read it all one time. Typically um, what's the best way for somebody to reach out to you, get some help and to learn about the projects you're working on. Yeah. So the best way is connect with me on Facebook, connect with me on LinkedIn. Although frankly, Facebook's a lot better. I'm on there more often. And you can find out more about the book at www.nlpco.com. And that's got a bunch of information. You can reach out to me there. There's a ton of, um, ton of ways to catch me over there. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you again coming on, Tracy. Um, you and I have connected on a wavelength. And sometimes you meet somebody and you're like, wow, this is somebody truly that appreciates the craft and the gift and taking it to the next level. I look forward to doing that with you in the future. Yeah, you too, Daryl. Thank you so much. You're welcome.